What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In yesterday's video, if you guys checked it out, I did a lot of stuff on the Accord, blacked a lot of stuff out, but I'm still not done yet. So what I'm gonna be doing today is re-refinishing my brake calipers. So two and a half years ago, I showed you guys how to build a very cheap big brake kit. I changed the brakes up front and I also changed the brakes on my Honda Accord in the rear. I changed calipers, lines, pads, and rotors, and it was all relatively cheap. If you guys wanna check out that playlist, I'll have a link right here. You guys can check that out. It's been two and a half years and 70,000 kilometers later since I did that though. I already went through a full set of pads, front and back, and a full set of rotors. Now I'm on the second set right now and it's starting to get closer to winter time. So I want to take care of this, paint it, re-lubricate the brakes and inspect everything now so I don't have to do it when it gets cold. So right now I have the driver's side wheel removed from the car and I want to show you how the brake caliper looks after we went through that whole procedure. So these here are the brakes that I refinished on the Accord and I had these installed two and a half years ago. I put over 70,000 kilometers on this brake caliper setup and even to this day, they don't look that bad. But something to note is that they are starting to chip, but why? So what happens is that if you have your wheel and you go to put this on the car and you don't install it perfectly straight, if these spokes come in contact with the caliper, the paint on there is going to chip. So you can see that I have a little bit of paint chipping on the top. I have a little bit chipping down right there. It still looks good, but definitely could be refinished. Now the amount of clearance that you have between the wheel and the caliper really makes a difference as to how likely that caliper is to getting hit. So the more room you have, the less likely it is. The closer it is, the more likely it is. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be removing the wheel, taking the full braking assembly apart, and I'm gonna refinish the caliper and give it a slightly different look. These here are the brake calipers that are factory powder coated on my Mini Cooper John Cooper Works. Something to consider is that if you have a set of wheels with a large set of brakes, well, if that wheel comes in contact with it, you are going to be chipping the finish. Now, powder coating is a more durable option, but it is a lot more expensive. So should something happen like this, um, you're going to have to send the entire caliper out. They're going to have to disassemble the caliper and basically bring it back to a bare cast aluminum piece. So what we're going to be doing today is not refinishing this, but I'm going to show you how to refinish the calipers with paint just like I did before, but I'm going to be spicing things up and doing something a little bit different. This looks terrific, but I'm still not done yet. I wanna work with the caliper a little bit more just to give it a little bit more pop to it. So right now we have the whole thing covered in a gloss black paint and we have the Advix sticker on the caliper. So this is an Acura RL caliper made from Advix. There are four bolts that are holding the caliper, the front part of it, to the back side. It's a two-piece design. Now what I'm gonna be doing is taking all of these bolts out and replacing them with nice stainless steel ARP studs. So this four piston caliper, like most four piston calipers, are made of two different parts. So we have these four bolts that hold both sides together. I'm gonna to be using a Torx T50 bit to remove each one of these. Now I'm not gonna take all of them out and then put all the new ones in because there's still brake fluid that goes in between each side. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with one and then replace it with another one and then work to the next one and then replace it with another one. I'm gonna do that until the entire caliper has the new bolts installed into it. Now, something to consider is that these two bolts are technically a little bit shorter than these two bolts here. That's why I had to purchase two different kits. Each one of these kits comes with five bolts and five washers in total. You're only going to need four of them to do both calipers. So with the four brake caliper bolts, the one, two, three, and four on the front side of the caliper, with each of those torqued up to 28 foot pounds, and the two bolts holding the brake caliper up to the back side of the knuckle, with those torqued up to 40 foot pounds, the install down here is pretty much complete. Now because I removed the brake caliper from the vehicle when I was doing this entire procedure, I need to remove all the air that was introduced into the system and I need to fill up each one of these pistons, so there's space back here, I need to fill all that up with brake fluid. So I'm gonna be doing that in a separate video. If you guys wanna stay tuned for that, stay tuned for next week's New Tool Tuesday video. I'm gonna show you a tool that is made specifically for doing that and it does an unreal job. Usually when you're bleeding brakes, it's a two person job, but with this tool, you can easily do this by yourself. Before I go ahead and wrap up this video though, see the wheel that I have right there? That's the same style wheel that I have for the Accord. So I have a, a couple extras as spares, um, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing that to my other wheels. So these wheels here are Nissan 350Z Track V1 wheels. These are made from Ray's Engineering and I purchased a set of stickers. Now these wheels are very similar to the TE 37s and those wheels have this sticker and that sticker as a stock option on the wheel. So if you guys buy one, it'll come with stickers and that's where you'd place them. So I figured why not complete that look, make these wheels look very similar to it and I think this is an unreal look. I really like how the white and black contrast against the silver and it's gonna look really sweet once it's installed on the car. So I've got a decent amount of work to do before it starts to get dark out, so I'm gonna hurry up, uh, put the wheel on the car, put the other stickers on the other wheels, take the car out, and show you guys how I unraced my car. Okay, so the cord's outside, wheels are on it, brakes are all bled, and it looks killer. Now, I'm gonna be basically keeping this look at least until springtime. If I'm not really digging it then, I'll probably change it up, maybe just change the color of the wheels. Um, but all the color is really removed from the Accord. So everything's either black, white, or silver, and I really am liking the look. Now, the cars that I am gonna be keeping a little bit of contrast to are the Z, and inside the garage, I've got the Mini. Now, I'm gonna be working on both of those in the next coming weeks, so stay tuned, guys. Since the Accord is my daily, I'll be putting more kilometers on that, and I'll be keeping the Z and the Mini in the garage where I'm gonna be modifying them and putting more money into them. If you guys have any other suggestions or what I should do with the Accord, maybe over the course of the winter, or what I should do to it in general, let me know, comment sections down there. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.